COVID treating you? Oh, I don't fucking care. Yeah, I don't really either. I feel <laughs> like, um, have you seen that meme that was like, damn, I'm antisocial as fuck, but I like to go to like a place or two. That's yeah. how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Like if I didn't go to work every day, I'd probably lose my fucking mind. So yeah, same, but I work from home. So, <laughs> so it's I've, the same for you no matter what. With, yeah. <laughs> Have you been, uh, like, binging any shows or anything? Oh, fuck yeah. I do nothing but watch shows all day, all night. Well, what, what are you watching? <sighs> okay. Well, I always watch um, Futurama, It's Always Sunny. Like, those are the ones I just continue to binge over and over again. Yeah, but only those shows. I can't, like, the, the fucking rom-com. Oh, can I cuss? Because... Yeah, uh, you can say anything you want to say. You can say, can I fucking cuss if that's what yeah. you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't think I can help myself at this point in time anymore. Um, but yeah, on Netflix, you know, I Tiger King to like everybody else. Uh-huh. That bitch Carol Baskin, did she kill her husband? Yeah, that bitch definitely killed her husband. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Pretty sure it was a dead giveaway when she said that you can put stuff on the body and they'll Dude, yeah, she was like, you'd have to dip them in anchovy oil or something. I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, maybe if that's what you wanted to do. But yeah, awesome. I, I watched like every um, serial killer doc. Did you? Well, obviously, then you watched Mindhunter. Yeah, that's like my favorite show. I know that one was great. <sighs> I just finished uh, Middle Ditch and Schwartz. It's that like uh, improv show on Netflix. It's like basically two guys get up on stage, like they don't bring anything. They just go to a theater and they ask people in the audience, like, what what happened to you recently or whatever. And then they act the whole thing out for like an hour. It's amazing. Yeah, I did. I did actually watch that. See, I watched so many fucking things. I don't even know <laughs> <laughs> names of them. Oh, that was hella funny. They just clowned on those people with the weird wedding situation. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Short Paul? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did the kicking legs. The like, best part was the kicking legs, and then at the end, when they were uh, doing the wedding, they they stood on chairs so that he <laughs> had to look up. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Did you see? Um, while well, we're just like talking about shows. Yeah. Um, did you um, this see is the... this is how this is gonna go. Just so you know, we're just gonna talk about whatever. Oh, cool. Sweet. Yeah. See, I I can't watch stuff that's like super cringeworthy, like The Office. Like I hate The Office definitely was into the office for i just can't a- watch stuff where it's like so obvious that they cannot think that and real like as soon as as soon as they do such stupid shit that it's like there's no way this could really happen that's when it loses me and i feel like yeah. it's just like cringeworthy thing after cringeworthy thing happening all the time yeah that's how i feel about all romantic comedies and sitcoms honestly yeah I'm just like, you ever watch you ever watch any of those sitcoms on on uh, YouTube where they take the laugh track out? Ew, no, it's, that sounds awful. It ruins it for you forever. Because you <laughs> yeah. can tell, like, it, you can tell when they actually pause for, like, laughter, like, audience laughter, or, like, laughter they put in. Like, if you actually watch those shows again, you'll see, like, they'll say a pun, and then they'll stop for, like, five seconds, and then they'll talk uh-huh. again, and it's just, it's just over and over and over again. You know what's the worst show? The Big Bang Theory yeah that's the one that's literally the one that you go on youtube and watch without the laugh track after this is over look it up okay (laughs) do big bang theory no laugh track fucking awful it's amazing so i guess we should talk about you i guess maybe if you want to Mm, to, (laughs) so uh what did you do before the whole pre-fly thing um like directly before or your life before what did you do beforehand well shit um okay I've done a lot of different stuff like before I fell into this but I guess the last couple of jobs I had had before um I worked in I worked in a call center for a bit like two weeks for what and uh restoration hardware cool Um, that was, that was a terrible job, but uh, I hated it so much that I was like, "Mm, this isn't for me. I don't like these regular job things. I had a few before that. Um, and I found a tattoo shop that would hire me as the shop girl, which is like the most demeaning name, (laughs) but was it like front desk stuff? 
yeah, you're just front desk and you clean and deal with um, the stupid people that walk in. Yeah. But that was fun. Um, I thought I was going to be a tattoo artist there for a while, but that didn't happen. Did you do any kind of like apprenticeship or anything? So it was technically supposed to be an apprenticeship. Right. Um, that's how they roped you in to do the front desk. Yeah, that's what they yeah. do with everyone. Yeah. Um, feel sorry for you shop help people. Um, but yeah, they said they were going to like teach me how to tattoo and shit. And then the um, the main guy never showed me anything <laughs> so, so i got tired of that um were you getting paid i was getting paid 250 dollars a week to work six days a week Jesus. and it was like 12 hours a day pretty much yeah so you got so, screwed yeah it was um it was not the best but i still got to hang out in a tattoo shop so like, yeah that was fun um and then i was sick of working for other people again so I decided to start uh, cosmetic tattooing. How do, how do you get into doing that? Um, you go to a training course thing um, that doesn't really prepare you at all. And then you just kind of wing it. <laughs> cool. Because aren't yeah. those like the things where people go and they get like their eyebrows like permanently put on? That's not it's something not... you want to wing. <laughs> no, it's not. So if I didn't work in the tattoo shop, like... And just, you know, I watched artists and stuff all the time, even though I wasn't getting training from yeah. them. Um, so I knew like OSHA standards. I knew like how deep in the skin you want to go, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the training for cosmetic tattooing is, it really is like you just show up. It's a three-day training course. That's insane. Um, they like have people getting their face tattooed for free. So... <laughs> It's a bad situation, man. That sounds but, terrible. Yeah, it really, it really was. But um, when I was doing it, it wasn't microblading either. You were actually tattooing with a tattoo machine. Um, on people's faces. On people's faces. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. what What would you do? Would you just do, like, eyebrows or would you do, like, other things? Oh, no. I did it all. I did eyebrows, eyeliner, and lips. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That is terrifying. <laughs> It's so sketchy. I could not imagine going into a place to get a free, like, somebody's learning tattoo on my fucking face. Well, it's the, I mean, it's the same kind of people that would, like, go to a, you know, scratcher tattooing in their garage. Oh, God, that's awful. (laughs) Yeah, just smoke a couple cigs beforehand and then hop in the chair. God, all right. Well, what happened there? You didn't like Um, it, or? I was actually really good at it, but, um... So like now everyone and their moms have like their eyebrows permanently tattooed. When I was doing it, it was just their moms. That's like my little thing that I like to say. <laughs> so it was like um, five or five or six years ago. And it was just old people getting tattooed. And I was doing it at the tattoo shop. Why, why do you think it was mostly old people? Because it's been around for a long time. And that's the people that got it done. <laughs> They're just they get to the point where they're finally like 50 years old and they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. As far well, as like doing it, their eyebrows. Yeah. Well, like, let's get it tattooed like, on my face. I think it was a big thing in the 60s and um, ink back then or pigments. That's different than like tattooing. Ink. Yeah. Uh, but the pigments like the black would turn light blue or light green um, <laughs> or pink sometimes. So a lot of the work that I did was like touch ups and oh, okay yeah, yeah. It makes sense. So, but I ended up hating it because it felt more like a spa service, and I was doing yeah. it at a tattoo shop. It's completely different now. Like this would have been the time to jump in, but I hated it, so <laughs> I, I quit after a couple years. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. what was next? Um, then. I started working um, with another like handmade clothing business place. Um, It was called Ruffles with Love. (laughs) And um, she did like workout tanks that were just like massive vinyl like wording on it. Yeah, it was, it wasn't the best. (laughs) So I worked with her for 
shit, I think like four years part-time. And then I started. Um, so she did a lot of stuff then. Yeah, she was doing really well. Um, I don't really know how she's doing now with it. I think it kind of fizzled after I left. But um, Did you learn a lot of stuff for what you're doing from her as far as how to get it done, I guess? I learned how to pull orders, which is super helpful. Um, and I learned like uh, my shirt vendor is the same one that she used. So I learned like how to set up an account and stuff there. Um, and just kind of how to like run a business out of your home because that's what she was doing. But um, I like I decided super early on when I started Freak Fly and I was still working there that I wanted to do screen printing, not vinyl. Right. And um, I um, like I wanted to use artwork and not do like sayings. Right. Yeah. Nice. And I've been I missed this, but I was like a commission artist for so long during that whole time period. <laughs> That's awesome. Were you just like uh like hand drawing things and scanning it in and all that? Yeah, I still to this day I just hand Well we draw. talked about that before that you were just yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm I I don't think anyone <laughs> does it like that. It's probably like the worst way, but it's all I know. The funny thing is I, is there's a lot of artists too that use like the iPad Pro and do it that way now, but they use the sketch looking lines to look like what you're doing. Yeah, and then I use um, paint.net instead of Photoshop. Because... I just started everything real cheap and uh, paint.net is free, you guys. Paint.net is free. It's like a different knockoff version of Photoshop and there's different plugins and stuff. And Bob Ross is in the corner showing you how to do things. Yeah, he teaches you how to paint happy trees and stuff. It's All awesome. Right. Paint dot, <laughs> Bob Ross paint.net. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you want to start freak fly then um again i got to that place where i was like burnt out working for someone else and i had this just reoccurring problem with my commissioned art i was doing stuff that other people basically told me i should do like right. i did um fashion illustrations which why would I do that? It makes no sense for me to do that. Um, I did that for a while and I did a lot of comic book, Star Wars themed, all kinds of stuff. And people just kept telling me what I should draw. So <laughs> eventually I got sick of it and I was like, I just wanna just like be my freak self. Like I wanna make whatever I wanna make. I don't wanna be pigeonholed. Um, and that's where my little saying came from. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Yeah. No, it's good that you did. I mean, it, it's weird kind of mix, but you did like the tattoo shop, which like, obviously you learned the style, which you can see in your designs now. Yeah. And then you did the illustration thing and then you kind of worked for the lady who was doing it. Not necessarily wrong, but obviously you saw there could be improvements. Yeah, and just then, different. Everyone has right. their different. But they were all definitely stepping stepping stones to get you where you are. It's not like you could have skipped all that stuff and just started doing what you're doing the same. Yeah, I agree. It's always like, I wish I had a cooler story like you guys have, you know? <laughs> I don't have that cool of a story. It's like such a good screen printer story. Like we were in a band. <laughs> it's, and then... Dude, it's everybody's <laughs> screen printer story. It's I was in a band and I sold merch and then I started doing that more. Yeah. It's like the same story. But it's so clear and concise. I never know like where to start. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just kind of felt like it and Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happened with me. Like I never I never at all thought I was going to do screen printing and now I fucking I love it. Like it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I I immerse myself in it as much as I'm doing a fucking screen printing design podcast like on free time and it's just like I don't know. I, I like it a lot. It's so it kind of worked. It kind of was weird. Like when I was in school, like middle school, high school, I was always drawing on everything and like, but I never do that anymore. Now I think it was just like the creative thing. Yeah. To do, you had to you get your I mean? creativity out. Just like right. somehow. And then though, like when I was in the band, I was the one who was like in charge of most of the marketing and like making the designs or dealing with the, you know, the printer and all that stuff. So it's kind of the same thing. When I got done with it, I was like, you know, kind of want to keep doing this we were like 
the only band that was printing all our own stuff, mm -hmm. which, you know, like when you print your own stuff, like the money you can make off of that versus if you were taking all your money and sending it to somebody else to do all the work. Yeah. Um, so we would go play a show and sell like a ton of stuff. And then we would just take all that money, go to AC Moore, buy blanks or go to Walmart or something, buy wow. blanks and then go back, just print one color designs on everything. And then the next show we'd sell them again. And yeah, it just kind of worked out that way. But where did you learn to print? Um, I watched a ton of YouTube videos <laughs> and uh, I bought that book, um, the one screen printing book. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, oh, it's funny because I was listening to um, Lee, the yeah. podcast we just mm -hmm. did with cat him. Spit. The cat spit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that guy's awesome. Um, he only has the best hair. Him. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's the, what sells it. The guy from Ryonet has great hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's famous for that um, hair. Yeah. So I watched those uh, but most of those videos are all for plastisol yeah so i i really i fucked up so many prints with my water-based white ink it took me so long what made you it. what made you want to do water base instead uh i think i did so much research beforehand to try and figure out like what was the best way and I knew I wanted to just start with a one color situation. Um, mm -hmm. And I think everything I was reading was telling me how like soft the water base is. Yeah. And um, I don't, I still to this day do not have like a flash drying unit. Mm -hmm. So I just have my little heat gun and everything I read also told me like, I need a flash unit if I do plastisol. And I was like super pandery to the, like eco-friendly thing yeah. when it started mm -hmm. so that was i mean it still is to this day it's kind of like they push that really hard that it's more eco but really the only thing that's eco about it is that you're not using as many cleanup chemicals to yeah. clean the screens yeah it doesn't make the ink awesome. any more eco it's just you're using less chemicals than the other way but that's a whole huge wormhole debate that yeah you know, we could get into but you you haven't at all tried plastisol or you just have strictly done water base? No, I've never tried it. I want to pretty badly, but I'm scared. I don't know why I'm so scared. <laughs> it's just that the thing, thing is, is it's known it's known for being thing. like more user friendly. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> like oh fuck. I I destroyed so many screens when I first started. Like, God, for the first year, I was just going through screens, clogging them yeah. up. Like, I think the t-shirt forums is what, like, I finally found some answers in. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm sure Plastisol would have been way easier. Um, and I never, I didn't think to do the heat pressing until, like, two years ago. Mm -hmm. It means it's working, and it, you like the prints, and they're soft or whatever. No, but the scary crazy. part is, is that if it's not... If you don't get all that moisture out and somebody goes and washes that shirt, all the ink falls off. Yep. And that definitely has happened. <laughs> yeah. Like I still have, you know, one in every, you know, however many shirts, like I'll get someone message me like, they're so sweet too. Yeah. <laughs> Customers are so nice. They're like, um, some of my design washed out. And I'm like, oh shit. Like I'm yeah. going to send you another one. I'm so sorry. Blame it on the manufacturer. Be like, oh, that fucking shirt blank. It does it to me all the time. <laughs> No, I, I own it hardcore. I'm just like, yeah. oh, I up. well, you would have that, you would have that issue with plastisol too. It's not like it's going to cure anything. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, but <laughs> like the only, the big advantage with plastisol is it doesn't dry. So like if you were doing a design, like say a free fly logo or something, you could leave plastisol on the screen, pick it up a week later and print it again. And it would be totally fine. That's insane. But like if you cleared the screen, like normal print on a test shirt, and then, you know, I use like business cards or whatever, where we scrape out all the ink, the excess ink in the screen. You can just, like I said, store the screen somewhere. And then when you want to go to print again, just put ink in and go. But you don't want to leave actual ink in the design, like in the stencil of it, because it'll eventually, I mean, it does eventually dry or like the, you know, top of it'll get crusty or weird. Yeah. So that's, like I said, that's the reason why a lot of people like Plastisol, because it's so forgiving. 
Yeah. Like if you use water base, you're constantly having issues with stuff like drying the screen or you can't like you can't like do five shirts and then go watch a show and come back and then do five shirts and whatever. You gotta do it all right then and there. Yep. Do it all right then and there and then go wash the screen like immediately after and spray well, it in between. Yeah. Well the best thing is is you learn the hardest one first. Yeah. <laughs> That's like it's the same thing with my drawing. Like I'm for some reason just sticking to the hardest ways instead yeah. of learning the easy ways. Yeah, and we talked about this in the last podcast too, but it's kind of like there's a million different ways to do what we're doing. Like you do it one way, I do it a totally different way. But as long as you get the end product that you want, then it doesn't matter how you got there. It, it's just funny because like like you said, you could do everything the hard way, but to you that's the smoothest, best way, most, you know, yeah. money wise you know with your programs and stuff you don't have to pay I mean it's just whatever works for you is what yeah. what you should do cheap bitch for life <laughs> you should make shirts to say that on it I should <laughs> <laughs> do you do like print on demand or do you do like pre-sales I print on demand <laughs> right I do I've done a couple pre-sales um usually I just launch a certain amount of stock if it's like a um, special kind of garment, but if it's just like black tees or whatever, I just print stuff to order. So you're just throwing the screen up and then printing whoever ordered that and then yep. the next day do the same thing? Yeah, again, it's like the hardest way. <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, if especially because you're using water base, if you're cleaning the screen out every time anyway, what's it matter? Yeah, it's just my flow now. Like I yeah. pull the... 10 screen five to 10 screens I need like for the day and line the shirts up get her done yeah do you have like a set um kind of like turnaround that your customers are expecting yeah um my listed turnaround is two to five business days but I get almost everything out the next business day yeah that's awesome yeah, I just have like this immense pressure within myself that I'm like, I need to get this shit out right now. Yeah. Like taking a day off in the, you know, every other day or whatever. I just don't know. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Anyways. Yeah. I saw you got those necklaces made. Is that something you're trying to like get into more is like jewelry and stuff or? I don't want to like get into it at all, but um, I don't know. I just like to, I just get bored sometimes and I just want to like pop out a completely different kind of product. And yeah. I found that girl who does it, who also like hand stamps everything. Oh, really? So I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to like support another handmade shop at the same time, a woman-owned business, like it's all cool, so. So you're, you're promoting the fact that it, somebody else made it. Yeah, I do that with everything. So like if I buy a design from someone, I call it an artist collaboration and I like okay, cool. tag them and everything. Um, I've sold a couple of things from other people and I always tag them. Yeah. Cause you kind of have like, it seems like a diehard group of customers. Yeah. They're so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though. Cause yeah. it's kind of like whatever you put out, they're looking for all the time. It's not like you have to constantly make, I mean, obviously you want to make cool stuff, but you know, you kind of have like, Oh, my next thing is going to be this. And then, you know, kind of that a lot of them are going to pick it up. Yeah, it's, it's super awesome because that was like, you know, like when you're first starting, you just don't know if anything's going to sell and it takes, like, it took me a long time to get to a point where I launched something and I was like, okay, I know I can push at least 40 of these and they'll sell right. and like, you know, keep going up from there. But how did you, how did you grow that? Like, obviously you have a bunch of people, which most clothing lines strive like and never get that where they never get people that are dedicated to their brand and want to get stuff like how did you how do you feel like in your mind you got to that point where like did uh, you do something specific where you're just like super open or yeah, did well, there, you... was, there was definitely a point like I think for the I think for the first like six months to year that I started Freak Fly specifically I was pretending like I was big. Like right. I didn't show myself. I didn't show that it was handmade. I wasn't trying to like push that at all. And then um, I found some other shops that were showing like themselves printing the stuff and 
like talking about their day and, and stuff like that. And I was like, maybe someone will give a shit. And I started to like, just show like, I'm really not that big. I'm still to this day running out of like a dining room area of a one bedroom apartment. So (laughs) like, I just, I just got real, I guess I stopped, you know, lying. (laughs) Um, and I just show, like, I show my customers so much love. I genuinely give a shit about them. So, well, that's, that's how I found out about you is I, I don't know, even remember how I first saw it, probably from another clothing brand or something, saw your stuff. And then what made me want to keep watching was the fact that you were always there and you were always talking about what you were doing or what you were watching or whatever. And, you know, kind of, yeah. that's what sucks you in. You don't want to, you don't want to follow people or, you know, that are just trying to push product on you all day long. Yeah. Ugh. And I, I love to show like my fuck ups too, because yeah. I find it so refreshing to see people like fail <laughs> because it's just part of life. Like I, yeah. I get sick of seeing all the perfect stuff. Right. So I like to just. Well, everybody who follows you and wants to buy your stuff is probably more invested in the knowing that they're supporting you than yeah. just Which what is the design crazy. is. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome <laughs> like, though. It's awesome. Yeah. It wigs me out. Just you're the you're different. the brand for the most part. Yeah. So <laughs> don't weird. don't show that look. You are. It's it's just it is weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I don't know about you, but uh, you know, I try to like talk to my babes all the time. Yeah. And if somewhat like uh when I live with my boyfriend, he'd like walk past and I'm like, I'm not I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> it's so weird for other people to see it's like ugh, yeah. that's a cool thing for me <laughs> yeah so you can't do like talking about stuff in front of other people you'd rather do it when nobody's around I'm better at it now I was yeah. like super insecure <laughs> but yeah. yeah now I'm now I don't care as much but it's still like you know I'm yeah. never gonna like walk around the mall and be like dude those guys. people those people <laughs> cringe me out so hard like I get yeah. it like I've kind of always wanted to do that with, with upstate stuff. And I do it sometimes, but I could never like walk around the shop with my phone up in my hand being like, yeah, today we're putting this. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, so embar- like, and I, and you don't have this obviously cause you don't have a bunch of employees running around, but like anytime I do anything that I'm trying to be somewhat serious about showing something or doing anything, there's always an employee of mine in the background, like pulling their balls out. Or like, you know what I mean? Like nothing but fingers in the air everywhere. And it's just like, dude, come on. I I can't remember what I was doing a little while ago, but I was doing like a podcast or something. It was like this. And I was sitting at my desk at work and we have two windows right behind my desk. And they were like outside the windows, like fucking around. And it was just like. Are they doing it on purpose to fuck with you? Oh, hundred percent all the time. See, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but it sucks when you're like talking to somebody and trying to be serious. That's what I mean. Like you, you said you felt uncomfortable. I could be saying stuff that's like heartfelt about my company and stuff like this. They're just like, they're just like, oh yeah, fuck you. Blah. It's just like, so good. Yeah. Like you don't really think that it's just like, oh God. Yeah. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I do these. That's why I do these at home at 10 o'clock at night. Cause there's nobody around to fuck with me. Yeah. You're so weird, man. I'd be asleep by now. <laughs> Dude, I don't go to bed till like two. That's crazy. I'm the, I'm not at all. Like people think that like I have a successful business and all that. Like I'm really good at business. And I'm good at like doing what I do. But when it comes to my personal self, I'm a fucking garbage piece of shit. Human hey, being. Hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> high five. Virtual high five. Woo. Uh, yeah. Like I don't eat good. Like I should. I don't sleep ever. I'm that person where I don't go to bed until my body fucking shuts off. So I, I just stay up until my mind shuts off and I finally fall asleep. And yeah, I just, there's things like I'm getting to that age now where I feel like I should start doing things for my body because it's affecting me, but it's hard to do that, man. (laughs) I just, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. Yeah. I don't want to get into that because I'm just a piece of shit. 
<laughs> yeah, I keep like telling myself, especially because like, you know, we're all getting fluffy here in, <laughs> in this current state, just ordering food in and shit. And I'm like, God, it's time to work out, but yeah. I'm not going to. If I was using that excuse, I would have to say that I would have been quarantining for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <sighs> I'm kind of guilty of that too. Yeah. But. So like before, before I did upstate, I, w- I worked for Sears and I installed appliances. So I was like that guy who would show up at your house and I was like skinny and I had like long hair past my shoulders. And I was just like, you know, I'd walk <laughs> in and I'd be like, I'm here to install your washing machine. And, did you say uh, it like that too? Yeah, no, exactly. I said, I said, I'm, I'm here. here, I'm here. And I'd throw my hair back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dude, so many times, like this is kind of an off topic thing for this, but so many, like it happened at least four times where I would walk in a house and there would be like, you know, cause it's the middle of the day or whatever. And there would be like a housewife home and she'd be like in a robe and I'm yeah. like trying to install appliance or something. This one lady, this one lady stands out forever. And I always tell this story where I'm like, I can't remember what I was doing exactly. I was installing something. And she came up to me like five times and was like, by the way, did I mention my husband's out of town? Fuck yeah. Like, I was like, hell yeah, this is awesome. But I've got like my partner with me who's like 30 years older than me, just like handing me wrenches and stuff. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> it was amazing. Dude, uh, people think that's not a thing. It it's 100% a thing. a thing. 100% a thing. Uh, so many times I've gone into houses and stuff when it's like super, it's like blatant. They're like, I can't wait to, like they probably could have had their husband like go pick the shit up from Lowe's or whatever and install it. But it's like, yep. <laughs> no, I want a delivery guy. Yeah, they want that fresh meat up in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, my, uh, my dude used to work for AT&T and uh, he got like he himself didn't have those situations or he he kind of did a couple times and I love hearing about it it's the yeah. best. <laughs> <laughs> oh lovely I don't know how we got this far off topic but I, I like I it know. I'm cool with it <laughs> I think we were talking about being pieces of shit. Oh, just, yeah, yeah. That's what got me there. Yeah. So so basically, when I started the company, I just sat at a desk all day, and you get stressed out about business, and you eat Arby's. That's what happens, and you oh. end up this way. Arby's is the worst. I would never be an Arby's person. Well, when you live Talk in a small them. town, and there's only fucking three options, you eat Arby's, okay? I don't know, man. They've got gray meat. Yeah, but they have chicken tenders. <laughs> Oh, chicken tenders. Okay. Yeah. Tendies and fries. Come on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I can't, I can't get my shit together though either. Even just like stretching. Do you stretch? No, I can't fucking stretch. I'd break something. <laughs> break your body? <laughs> yes. My body would fucking snap in half if I stretched yeah. anything. I have like the worst back. I've had an old man back since I was like 15 years old. I no joke have said this. I would love, like my back hurts so much all the time. I feel like it would feel better if I got like horse kicked in the back to like pop something back in. I make my boyfriend punch me in the back. (laughs) I want that. I want somebody, I want somebody to punch me in the back. Well, I don't, I want to say that on this because then I'm just going to be walking along someday and some dude's going to punch me in the back. Yeah, now your coworkers are just gonna fucking come on. The back. Yeah, no, so, I'm the same way. Maybe we're just superheroes. Yeah, that's probably it. Your own way. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, I'm riding this, sh- being a piece of shit out until they come out with a super pill that just like cures everything, and then uh, there you go. we are the smart ones because we enjoy our life and we ate what we wanted to until uh, that sweet pill came out that Elon yeah. Musk is gonna make. All right, back to back to your story. So, what uh, what are some roadblocks you've run into with this whole thing? It obviously hasn't been super smooth sailing the whole time. Um, well, for one, not being able to pay my bills for like the first half of my business for sure. That's for everybody, um, though. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I'm so grateful where I'm at now. I'm still a super super small business, but I can pay my rent like Mm -hmm. live by myself and all my bills just from this like I dreamed of that that's amazing um I also like just technically speaking um I don't make my own screens anymore because when I very first started 
I tried <laughs> to burn my own screens. Yeah. And I ruined hundreds of dollars worth of screens to the point where I was just like, this wasn't worth it. Like I can just yeah. have them made. So I was going to ask you that on Instagram once if you, if you did that, cause I felt like that would be perfect for you. Do you use like Anthem? Yeah, I use Anthem. Anthem um, yeah. And I've, I've used a place called like uh, NorCal screen print. Supply, mm-hmm. I think. Yep. They're cool too. Um, but I, I've, I've used Anthem since the beginning. So I like to do just... Anthems. Are they, are they near you? No, they're in San Francisco. I mean, relatively speaking, they're in San Francisco. I'm like uh, an hour and a half away. Yeah, I'm in New York. So everything in California has got to be right next to each other for me. That's what yeah. it seems like. Yeah. See, for us, for us, it's California. Everything's just right near each other. And then for you guys, we're, everybody's in New York City. Yeah, for us. definitely. Right. <laughs> so they're close by. Yeah. Yeah. Just down the street. Right, exactly. California is a small state. Do you study like trends or anything with your stuff or do you just kind of make whatever you want and hope it works out? I just go with whatever I am digging. Right. I don't have like one thing that I wouldn't wear myself. So Which kind of ends up being kind of a fashion trend at the time, I guess, if you're just yeah. constantly making new stuff. Yeah, I guess I will say like cropped things. I was just going to say crop tops. I feel like yeah. are huge and like sweatpants. Yeah, crop tops are like such in cropped like hoodies and stuff like that are a huge thing. And I'm not super into that. Um, so that is a trend that like I've made stuff for. I end up wearing it, but it's like not my main thing. Um, and like distressing stuff, that's not, mm-hmm. you know, that's a trendy thing, I guess. Or you um, do I, Well, you, you do that a little bit, don't you? Like cutting yeah. things? Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> That's like yeah. half of the shirts that get ordered from me end up getting distressed. How do you how do you go about doing that? Do you have like kind of a pattern you stick to or do you just like cut shit? Um, I just cut shit, but I try to keep it like in certain areas. And I, I also have like um my white rose shirt has like big gashes in it. That one has like kind of a set style to just that shirt. Did you um, find out the like that there's ways not to do that by having customers be like this is falling apart or my nipples no, hanging out I actually I don't I've never had someone say like their distressed shirt is falling apart and honestly I mean they'd sound kind of stupid <laughs> if they didn't <laughs> say that like my holes there's more of them or yeah. whatever um but like I have distressed stuff myself and I treat my clothing horribly I like throw yeah. it in the dryer on high and everything um for the most part, if you're like making the holes yourself and you, I pre like stretch them all. Oh, okay. That's what I was wondering. Like, is there a technique to it or you just like razor blade things? Oh no, I don't, have, I would not have fingers if I razor blade bladed things. I have my little, my little tiny scissors. So you just fold it and cut it? I don't even do that. I hold like the garment over my hands and go like that. <laughs> You just told me you didn't want to use a razor blade and you're ha- you're hanging stuff over your fingers and just cutting them with scissors. Yeah, it's a risk every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's how I stay fresh. Yeah, it's, it's, I know it for the most part, but I've definitely almost cut my finger off like a few times. <laughs> nice. Are you like picky at all with apparel as far as like USA made or organic or certain blends or certain brands? So... Again, I used to be super pandery when I very, very first started and I got USA made organic cotton shirts, uh, but I had to order them from Royal Apparel. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I like that was Royal like, Apparel. Yeah, they're, they're nice, but it's like twice the cost of mm-hmm. my Bella shirts, which I yeah. love. Um, so I, I stick mainly to Bella shirts and hoodies and then I like... Um, I like some of the next level tees too. Mm-hmm. Do you look at the Bella fast fashion stuff? Nope. <laughs> if you look at, yeah, if you look at the Bella fast fashion stuff, that's basically them doing the work for you is look like looking up fashion trends and they do like smaller batches. Hi, there's a cat. You're such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> uh, they just kind of like look at like what they think is going to be popular and then they they sell it and then if it is popular they add it back into the line so that might be something to check out because then you can see like colors or cuts that 
are coming up soon that you might get yeah. before anybody else gets. Do you ever market anything to guys? I <laughs> knew that was coming. So. Well, I think I asked you that before and you said, yeah, yeah. like there was a couple things. I never intended for my brand to be like all female, like right. almost every single shirt that I well, have. When you make, when you make shirts with the left chest just says tits on it. I don't I think a dude would not that a dude wouldn't wear that, but they're gonna get some stares if they just have yeah, a shirt no, that says tits I don't, on it. I don't want a dude to wear that, <laughs> that would be a curve one. Like leave that to the ladies. Yeah. But um yeah, I used to try and like get more guys, but they just don't take like no one takes photos for me. No yeah. guys take photos for me. So um So you don't get unsolicited man pictures sent to you often? No. Thank <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> No, but I, I mean, I don't want to like, um, you know, make men feel like they're not welcome at all. But yeah, I, I mean, guys, send me some pictures. Like, some oh, pictures. you're asking, you're asking for the worst right now. Not, a, <laughs> just, just, just Well, that, it's kind of like us, it's us in this podcast right now. We don't have pants on. Yeah. We're all Donald Duck in it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Like I have a hoodie on to act to make it look like I have extra clothes on, but really yeah. it's, that's the only thing covering up my bottom half right now. Yeah. You're like, Oh, I'm really cold. <laughs> I'm cold. Cause it's drafty on the bottom side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop picturing like Tom Segura and Christina Pajitsky and all these like <laughs> video yeah. podcasters, just yeah. Donald Duck in it. Honestly, last was it last podcast or the one before i had like a flannel on like i just took in a shower and i put a flannel on because i didn't i wanted to like look decent for the video or whatever but my bottom half was legit like old navy sh like sweat shorts and i had like <laughs> like fucking house shoes on so i look like i look like a piece of shit from the waist <laughs> down and i looked somewhat presentable from the waist up yeah i liked um who was that in your i've watched all of them so far who was it in the first um podcast grizzly wheeler he was awesome i yeah. love that he like just did not give a shit yeah well <laughs> i talked I about that did i say that in the last one yeah I, yeah where i talked about basically that he had like a fucking mattress behind him like half cocked yeah. probably piss stains was, all over it i was kind of nervous when you asked me to do this podcast and then i watched that one and i was like oh okay this is yeah <laughs> it's a free-for-all basically yeah, no, like I, like I said, this whole thing with the podcast is I, I feel like I watch, because I'm kind of like a print nerd, I watch everything anybody puts out that's print related, like on YouTube and stuff like that. So constantly watching all these videos that people are doing and they're they're like over being cautious of what they say and they're like always being ultra PC about everything and oh, I don't know if I should get into this topic because I might hurt people's feelings and all that other stuff. It's like this whole thing that I'm doing is like, I like with you or anybody, like I talk to people in my DMS all day long, like other print shops about just anything and everything. Yeah. I basically just wanted to do a live version of that. Like if we, we could have easily had this whole conversation over Instagram, just texting back and forth, but like, why not talk it's about it really live? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck it, whatever we do the whole thing live and then everybody gets to hear like the experiences that like we have. And I don't know, it's like you could be printing by yourself in your apartment and I have multiple auto bunch of employees, but we share the same experiences. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. It kind of, de it demystifies the whole thing where people are just like, Oh man, there's gotta be, you know, he has to know so many secrets and that's like another thing too, is like the logo I did for, well, I had made for like the show with like, it looks like a Freemason logo or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of, I've had so many people, me and Lee were talking about this day where so many people hit me up and they're like, oh, are you a Mason? And I'm just like, dude, like I'm not Mason. It's just like, <laughs> it's the it's idea cool. of a, it's the idea of like a secret society. Like that's what a lot of people with print shops, they think like everybody has to hold their secrets. Everybody has to you know, guard everything. And it's like, I just kind of wanted to do this thing where we just talk about shit like normal yeah. people. Yeah. Like we could be, you know, and this was what always happens at conventions. It's like, you go to a screen printing convention to like learn a few things earlier in the day. And then the rest of the day is just talking to other print shops and bullshit. And like, that's well, what this is. To <laughs> I told you to come to the last one. I know. I was like, 
didn't want to go by myself. <laughs> now that they're not, now that they're never going to have them ever again because everybody's too scared to cough on each other. No, it's all going to be back. Do you have any advice for people that if they were doing kind of what you're doing, you know, how to start and what to do and not, what not to do? Um, people ask me for that kind of stuff all the time, which I'm shocked at because I'm still very, very small. But yeah, you, you're, um, I think you're super successful at what you're doing. Honestly, I'm not trying to like blow smoke up your <laughs> ass or anything, but thanks. Um, that's why I picked you for this. Come on. <laughs> I would say like, uh, well, one, everyone asks like how much, it, how much it start or costs to start screen yeah. printing. And yeah. that's such a like variable thing. But I also wished I had that answer when I started. So like, I'm just gonna say that uh for my little one color press it was like a kit plus everything you like actually need um and a heat press i probably paid between one and two thousand dollars with my initial stock which was like three shirts of each like you know right. size and color so there's that uh i was working part-time when i started this it's the only way i could afford it but i'm sure there's loans you can make it happen and the thing that turned my business around the most was like just being a real person <laughs> yeah. and not being like a fake brand and using the term we all the time and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So you know, it's the fake it till you make it that sticks with people so much. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Um, do you have goals for Freak Fly as far as like growing or? expanding or anything or are you just going to kind of do what you do until it runs mm -hmm. out i definitely have goals but they're not anything crazy i was actually like just talking to another um another handmade shop about this i don't ever want to get like the stage you guys are at is super cool i don't ever want that for like my brand yeah. like I, I i don't want um i would have like maybe one or two employees i'd like to be able to like pay someone else that would be cool um and i don't even really have a big goal space wise other than i want to like not be doing it out of a dining room mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> i'd love to just have like a dope ass garage or maybe like find a small small little warehouse split pace space <laughs> to um, print out of but yeah what if I'd like what if like zoomies or somebody came to you and said they liked your stuff and they wanted to carry it in stores would you want to do that or would you not want to because it would be out of your hands uh hmm that's a good question i think with a I lot of that stuff they have like preferred vendors that print everything like they're not going to want you to print individual shirts they're going to want oh i wouldn't be able to like handle those kind of numbers anyways myself like physically <laughs> right but i mean but it takes it takes your style and your brand a different direction like it's not you doing it anymore it's not you talking about it it's you taking your artwork and then giving it to somebody else and then they stock it in their store and sell it without your you being there i don't know it would have to be a really sweet deal and it would have to be i mean it would have to be like one shirt design or something like i wouldn't just sell my soul to them <laughs> right well that's why i wonder i mean that's good it's good to hear i mean it's yeah. important to your customers but it's a route that a lot of people take. I mean, that's a goal for a lot of people is to be like, Hey, my shit's in zoomies and which isn't a bad thing. You yeah. know, it's just, yeah. Hey, everyone just like know. has different, you know, different spaces they want to go to. Yeah. And it's just not personally at this point in time, you know, what yeah. I'm into. I, I like to have control and like want to have my hands on everything that I make. Yeah. Do you just want to get to the point where it's efficient and you have people helping you and you can pay your nine thousand dollar month rent for your baller pad <laughs> yeah yeah it would also it would be awesome to like take a little bit of a step back from printing or just a couple a couple steps of it so that i could focus a bit more on design because i'm yeah. so beat from just working that it's hard for me to have the motivation or creativity to draw a lot. How much farther do you think you need to go before you can hire somebody to print for you? Mm, I think I'm like 
See, again, though, it depends on where I decide. Well, to what live. if it was like, <laughs> what if it was like where you were doing for the other lady is you just stepped in and helped here and there? Like if you yeah, had a, I could, a buddy I could that could come in and pray for you. Do that like pretty, pretty soon. Um, if my numbers even just like stayed consistent. Mm-hmm. I just have like real low points at in January and February. So I well, kind yeah, of, uh, it's our industry in general. So it's yeah, not just you. Yeah, pretty much any industry. But yeah, um, yeah I'm I'm close to that, but mm-hmm. well, that was that that was something that I actually <laughs> ran into that might help you. I mean, I don't know if it'll help you or not, but we were at a point like two years ago where I feel like the company was growing like it it always grows every year but i feel like it was more stale than it should have been um and i feel like a lot of that was because of the fact that i couldn't get back personally and some of my staff couldn't get back to customers fast enough Mm -hmm. because we had too much other shit to do yeah so like you for instance you could be like i want to make more designs i have more designs in my head but i also got to print all these shirts i got to ship all this stuff i got to you know, come up with this other thing and do this other thing. I feel like you kind of can get to a point where you're just spinning your wheels because you're trying to do all these things yourself. But I had to come to terms with the fact of a, I need to say no, or I need to delegate things better, which I had to do like, you know, personally take that on myself to mentally be prepared for that. Um, But as soon as I did that, I hired basically like a personal assistant to handle all my emails. Yeah. So not all my emails, but the, you know, the people ask for quotes and stuff that still come through the website that come to my email. Mm -hmm. So I was getting like over a hundred emails a day that I had to respond to all of them. And that's just emails of people asking questions about orders, not, not like spam emails. That's like a hundred people asking, I'm ready to place an order. I need a quote and I can't do that every day. Yeah. So I hired somebody to do that. And as soon as I did that, and I basically where my role is now is to do marketing and stuff to like talk to big clients and stuff to actually grow the company. Like our numbers like went crazy. So like over the past two years, we've grown like way bigger than we were before, just because of the fact that I personally have time to work on the shit that I should have been working on years ago. Yeah. That's that's like, you might think you're at a point where you're like, I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should do this. But if you spent the amount of time you spend now printing orders and shipping orders on designing new things or contacting people to make, you know, cool necklaces or rings or whatever you want to make, like, do you think that would like make your sales jump up because you had a bunch of new shit? Yeah, probably. Yeah. (laughs) I also have like a, I don't think this makes sense at all, but it's in my head because I have like this core group of customers right now that, I I mean, I can count on so many of them to pretty much buy anything I put out, which is insane. But I, I'm like, I don't want them to spend too much money, which is not a business mindset whatsoever. But so I kind of limit myself to doing like one or two new things a month or, you know, kind of like half launches or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I just, I need to. (laughs) I need to just let that part go because it's kind of ridiculous. See, like we're learning things. Yes, we are. (laughs) I'm learning things. (laughs) Yeah. What would you see yourself doing if you weren't doing this? Oh, man. That's a good question. Like say this never happened, where would you be? What would you be doing? I think a lot of people do say this though, but I would love to have an animal rescue um, and rescue animals in your that are apartment. About to put yeah, just in my apartment. You know, I don't need to ask no landlord. Uh, <laughs> I don't need no man. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to like have a a little ranch and have some kind of animal rescue or something like that. But I don't want to do anything other than free fly. <laughs> well, that's good. I, <laughs> so I I was, it was a hypothetical. I wasn't asking <laughs> you to give it up. Don't hurt my feelings like that. <laughs> What uh? What are some of your favorite Instagrams to check out for inspiration? Ooh, okay. Um, I want to. I asked this on the last couple of podcasts, and everybody was like, "Well, you, of course." And I'm like, "No, like, I don't want that answer. I want people who are listening to actually be able to look at these people and search yeah, these people and find inspiration." Podcast. You don't yeah. need give me, promotion. give me people, legit people that, and it doesn't have to be like clothing related. Just stuff that's like 
you love and you find inspiration from? Okay. Um, so a couple of my favorite shops, one, uh, was like the first one that inspired me to be my fucking self. Um, and that is bomb apparel. I believe her name is Tiff. So is it at bomb apparel? Yeah. Um, I think it's like bomb. It's like underscore bomb underscore. I think that's her official thing. She is a single, uh, not she's married, um, but she is a woman owned small business owner. She hand prints everything herself too. She's awesome. Um, Katie from Carter designs. She makes signs. She does all kinds of cool stuff. Hello sailor tees. Also a super awesome shop. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, Rob at ghost and darkness brand. Yeah. I've been dealing with them a lot lately. Oh, that's awesome. Um, he is the one that uh, told me to do Shopify and I was on Mm. Weebly before and it's like my business has boomed so much since switching. Um, Blueprint Botanicals. I don't want to spend like 10 minutes listing all my friends. I'm going to edit them all out anyway because I'm only going to pick the ones I like. Okay. Do you even know any of them other than Ghost? I want to look them up. I want, that's the point of this is I want people to be able to look them up and share the love. Cool. Sweet. So the ones Um, you shouted out. Yeah. I'll check out. Sweet. I (laughs) share them all the time on my Instagram too. If you ever just need to find cool, small businesses, all different kinds, I shout them out constantly. So, so (laughs) this is just a plug for people to follow you so that they can see that, right? Yeah. It's a funnel and go to me. Right. So you're not actually like personal with anybody at all. You just want to the sales funnel. You're really a mastermind behind this. I'm a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Uh, do you have any like favorite books or podcasts? Obviously you read the screen printing book. Yeah. Um, I don't read it all. Uh, <laughs> Neither do I. Because we're pieces of shit, right? Yeah, exactly. Fuck that reading nonsense. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see podcast. I really just watch a ton of your mom's house. Um, I watch your mom's house, the honeydew. Ryan Sickler. Dude, your guys' merch for them is so sick. Like not even. Well, we did the, we did the merch for Tom for his, uh, his new special, the Netflix special. Yeah. That's so cool. You, You did, um, fuck. I can't think of that. Like good looking guy. Brendan Chaub. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you did his too. I knew what you're talking about. Yeah. There's not that many comedians that they're fit good in. looking. Yeah. Um yeah, that's really the podcasts that I watch, not listen to, watch. Um I watch like beauty videos, so <laughs> there's nothing wrong and, with that. Um, I watch videos of people showing me how to make a better yard so i feel like it's in the same vein that's cool i like <laughs> that it's not sincere it. at all <laughs> <laughs> like yeah that's cool you fucking exactly psychopath yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we i guess we established the best place for people to check you out and follow you is instagram yep not facebook I'm so. facebook is boring <laughs> for you yeah Ugh. it was even on facebook anymore yeah My mark zuckerberg yeah <laughs> he's the only one left well thanks for doing this i'm gonna go to bed maybe probably not though all right (laughs) i'll see you later see ya